Professor Dickinson in Maryland. Thank you very much, Diane. Mm -hmm. um, I'm curious how you developed this comparatively strict regulatory regime, and I say that with admiration rather than criticism. Uh, in general, in the Anglophone countries, you know, we tend to have this neoliberal <laughs> model, at least I think we do in the UK. Uh, and if we think in terms of a sort of spectrum, it seems to me that the UK is the most, I'm going to say lax, actually, or even more controversially, I will say captured by a permissive scientific climate. Um, I've just written an article with Marcy Donofsky in Nature Biotechnology about how the Nuffield Council was itself, Nuffield Council report that is on uh, gene editing, was captured. Um, I just wondered how Australia escaped this. That is, how did you, what was the origin of this fairly strict 2002 law? It's, it's really quite fascinating. So um, the other countries that align um, with Australia, I think very much is uh, Canada and Germany. And I think Germany, you can understand why they might take a very strict approach. It's interesting, Australia, I think people have a view of Australia that's different from reality. I believe that we are quite a conservative nation. And when it comes to um, things like these new technologies, particularly, I think what really concerned people is uh, was to do with the, the human embryo. So the human embryo, I think it's, um, it's recognized in Australia that it has a special status. So the debate about this legislation, which on the one hand prohibited some manipulations, but on the other hand allowed some research involving human embryos, was I think the longest ever parliamentary debate in Australia, which really illustrates how profound it was to take that step. Um, I can't really explain why that's the case, but, but it's certainly the fact that um, that's why it happened in 2002. It was interesting, there was a review in 2007, and by that time, somatic cell nuclear transfer was accepted, I think, as much more of a, a mainstream research tool, and the legislation was amended to allow for that. But prior to that, there was no... Uh, the, the legislation was called the prohibition, prohibition of human cloning, full stop. Just, uh, just that was a good talk. Mm. Clinicians should be hearing about legislation also. Just a very quick question. In the Australian approach, the relatively conservative approach, um, have there been any studies as to why this was so? Did religion play a role mm. or, or, or not? I'm just curious. Mm. I, I, I really do believe that religion did play a role. Um, and the dominant religion there would be? The dominant religion isn't the Catholic religion, but the dominant religious influence in Parliament is the Catholic religion. And so, you know, I, I think that that's, and you, you can understand why it was so confronting for members of Parliament to take that step. It was, it was really a confronting thing for many people. Thank you. Dr. Lander. So thank you for that really clear talk, really informative. I only wanted to add a piece of information with regard to the US being colored in that funny color. Uh, you referred to it as applying to public parties but not to private companies. But I think that's not right with regard to germline editing. Um, I believe the way the legislation works in the convoluted fashion that could only occur in the United States is what you're talking about does pertain to embryo research. Private parties may do embryo research. Public parties using public funding may not. But on germline editing, you may not introduce a foreign substance into an embryo without the approval of the FDA. And the FDA, through its budget appropriation, may not receive an application 
to insert foreign material into an embryo, and that applies to private as well as public. So in this amazingly contorted fashion, in fact, the law says if the FDA receives an application, it, whatever it does with it, it shall be deemed not to have been received. So it's even, you know, it's even a little different than the embryo research one. Any other country would just say, you can't do it. In the United States, we, we turn ourselves into this pretzel to do it. And it, of course, also comes from the, the, the religious motivation there. And I think it's because the embryo is, uh, research is what people are thinking about. Yeah, yep. so I will, I will convey that to Bartha and her colleagues. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, and it might be that it, because it's such a convoluted thing that it didn't justify that, the absolute prohibition. It's not a criminal offence, put it that way. do it, that could be a criminal offense, mm -hmm. to introduce an unapproved foreign substance. Who knows? It, it, it'll take multiple lawyers to answer that question properly. Yeah.